morning students yeah, in the last class we have started with gauss theorem and we have finished one of the application that is electric field due to uniformly charged thin wire so today we will be doing an electric field due to uniformly charged infinite thin sheet so let us see suppose this is a sheet which is uniformly charged let us consider a small area on this so first we have to draw a gaussian surface so let us see how we will draw a gaussian surface so what is the condition for a gaussian surface to draw it should any point on the gaussian surface the electric field should be same so if you just see suppose this is my thin charge sheet So, your Gaussian surface will be like this from both the sides because it is a thin sheet. So, if you just consider a single charge like this, you will have lines on both the sides. So, if you just take this much of area, so you will have this will be a Gaussian surface and this side also equally you will have. Suppose, if I want to find at this particular point what is the electric field due to this charge sheet. So, let us see how we can do. So, what will be the Gaussian surface here? It will be once again it will be a cylinder. Suppose the area is say ds. Now, let us see we can divide the whole Gaussian surface into three region. This is my say a first this is second and this is your third region. If you see the third region it is like this, this part here what will be the flux linked with it? It will be 0. Why it will be 0? Because if you just see the flux is given by E dot of d s. So, here there is no fluxes linking and it is equal to we have seen E d s cos theta. What is theta here? It is 90. So, it will become E d s cos 90. So, the flux is 0. It means that in the region 3 there will not be any flux. Now, let us see what will be in the first and the second region. So, we will just consider this. So, here the, the flux is just crossing this surface. So, we will assume this area and this area. So, let us see what we can do it. So, the electric flux will be equal to E, I can write twice of d s. So, the electric flux due to this particular region will be, why I am writing 2? Because on both the sides you have. So, it will be E to d s. So, say this is your equation 1. Now, by using a Gauss theorem, so here itself what is the total area here, total flux you will have here in this region. So, it will be you can write of course, it will be E 2, suppose the total area if I just assume it will say E 2 s. Now, from the Gauss theorem, once again what the Gauss has given? the total flux is equal to 1 upon epsilon naught the total charge enclosed in it. Now, what is this total charge? How will you calculate? If sigma is the charge per unit area, then what will be Q is equal to sigma into what is the area I have taken here? S I have taken. So, I will take So, let us rewrite the Gauss theorem. The flux is equal to 1 by epsilon that is sigma s upon epsilon. So, this is my equation 2. So, first from the definition we have got it and the from second we have got it from the Gauss theorem. We will just equate the two and we will get the value of electric field. So, it will be E 2 s is equal to sigma s upon epsilon naught. So, this s and s will get cancelled. So, you will get E is equal to sigma. So, this is an electric field at any point due to an uniformly charged sheet. 
Now, this I have taken a very thin sheet. If you just imagine if it is a thick sheet, then what will be the change in the expression you will have? Here also we will consider, if I am just considering thick sheet, we have to take this area, the total area will be sigma 2s. So, here this 2 and 2 will get cancelled and the sheet is thick. For thick sheet, you will get E is equal to sigma upon epsilon naught. Why? Because in that case instead of s we will have 2 s. So, automatically we will get sigma upon epsilon naught. So, here we have seen that it is independent of the distance at any point if you consider the electric field will be same. So, now we will do the uh, last application of the Gauss theorem that is electric field due to uniformly charged spherical shell. In the same way how we have done in the first two we will do it in the same way, first we will see what is the Gaussian surface. Of course, here the three points we have to consider separately, when we will take that when the point P is outside the charge sphere, what is the electric field, then we will take inside what will be the electric field and on the surface. So, if you just assume, suppose this is my charge sphere. Suppose this is uniformly charged sphere. So, now we are dividing this into three parts. So, first we are going to find out to find the electric field outside the charge sphere. So, let us take any point P outside. Now, first what we have to do? We have to draw a Gaussian surface. What will be the Gaussian surface here? Of course, it will be a sphere. So, just draw the sphere. Suppose the radius of the charge sphere is say capital R and the distance from the point P is a small r. So, again the same way we will be writing two equations. The first by definition we will find out the flux and second by Gauss theorem and we will equate the same way we will get the electric field. So, what is the definition of the flux density? It is E dot of d s. So, the total flux will be over the surface area. So, what is the surface area here? It will be E, total surface area of a sphere is what? What is the radius? Gaussian surface R. So, it will be E 4 pi R square. This is my equation 1. Now, second what we will do? Just same, apply the Gauss theorem. So, by Gauss theorem, What we can write? Flux is equal to 1 upon epsilon naught the total charge. So, once again we will find out what is the total charge. If again same way if sigma is the because we are taking only a surface area it is a shell. So, again sigma is a charge per unit area. Therefore, the total charge Q is the total charge enclosed by the Gaussian surface. So, what is the charge enclosed by the Gaussian surface? This. So, what is the radius? It is the capital R. So, it will be equal to sigma 4 pi R square. So, now what is the flux by the Gaussian surface? Instead of Q, we will put that value. It is sigma 4 pi R square by epsilon naught. This is equation 2. So, if you see once again 1 and 2 represent the same thing. So, we can equate it. So, it will be E 4 pi r square. So, this 4 pi and 4 pi will get cancelled. So, here you will have E is equal to sigma upon epsilon naught capital R square upon small r square. So, this is an electric field at a point outside the charge sphere. Now, second we will consider second case when it is inside. Now, can you tell me what it will be? You have any charge inside? No. So, the total charge inside the sphere is 0. Therefore, the flux will be 0 and thus the electric field will be 0. So, directly we can write inside if the point P is inside the charge shell the electric field will be 
0. Is it clear? Now, if you see the third case that is if it is on the surface, what will happen? This small r and capital R becomes same. So, if you see this equation, I can just write down E is equal to sigma upon epsilon naught. So, this is an expression for a electric field if the point P is on the surface of the charged sphere. So, our next topic is we will see what is electrostatic potential. So, let us try to understand suppose you have a, a conductor which is supported by an insulating stand. Suppose now if I just bring one positive charge inside this conductor whether any work will be done in order to bring this positive charge inside the sphere? No. Why? Because there is no electric field or there is no force. But now if I bring the second charge and if I place it here, whether now we have to do some work in order to place this positive charge inside the sphere? Yes. Why? Because now due to this positive charge which is already there, we will have a repulsive force. So, this second charge, this is the first say this is the second, the second charge has to do some work. So, this will be stored as a potential. So, if I just now bring the third charge, now what will be the work done? It will be more or less, it has to do the more work. Why? Because now already there are two charges. So, there will be more repulsive force. So, in order to bring the third charge inside this, we have to do more work. So, more potential. So, as you go on giving more and more charge to the system, its potential increases. Or in other words, how we can define a potential? It is the amount of work done in carrying a unit positive charge from infinity to some point in an electric field. So, let us now try to understand what is actually a potential difference. Suppose you have a source charge say Q. Now, if I assume say two points A and B and suppose if I keep a test charge say Q naught which is again a unit positive charge. Suppose in order to bring a unit positive charge or I can say a test charge from point A to B, we define the potential difference between the point A and B is equal to the amount work done, it is the amount of work done by a unit positive charge to bring it from the point A to B. So, what I can write? The potential difference between the two will be equal to the amount of work done in bringing the unit positive charge from point A to B. So, this is a potential difference. Now, if you see if the point you just imagine if the point A is at infinity whether there will be any effect there will not be any effect. So, V A will become 0. So, what I said? The point A, if we assume it at infinity, then V A will become 0 because the distance is very large. So, we will not have a effect of this charge at this particular point. So, what will become now? This expression will become V B is equal to, what is that? Will be equal to the work done by unit positive charge. So, now how will you define a potential? It is the amount of work done to bring the unit positive charge from infinity to some point in an electric field. Now, let us see how to calculate a potential due to a point charge. This is you a charge, 
a point charge. Since I am going to calculate a potential, so suppose at this particular point I want to calculate what will be the potential and this is say infinity. So, I want to find out a potential at this particular point. So, I want to calculate what is what will be the work done in order to bring that positive unit positive charge from infinity to this point. So, to get the expression what we will do? We we'll just take two intermediate points A and B. This is the actual point where I want to find a potential. So, this distance is say R and from here to here. So, we will take this distance as say X. Now, in order to bring we will calculate first the work done to bring the unit positive charge from point A to B. So, suppose from A to B the distance is say d x. So, first we will calculate work done. So, what will be the work done? In order to bring a unit positive charge from point A to B this will be equal to f d x. Now, I can write this f in terms of an electric field. So, this will be equal to I can write E d x of course, because I am taking a unit charge. So, f is equal what is the formula f is equal to q into e. So, this q I am taking has 1. So, it will be f will be equal to of course, with the minus sign we will have here. Why there is a minus sign? Because the direction of the electric field is this and the body is being moved from this to this point. So, the direction is opposite so, that is why a minus sign comes. So, this is a just a work done to bring a unit positive charge from point to point A to point B. Now, what we want to calculate actually the potential at point P that is a work done to bring this unit positive charge from infinity to this point. So, if I just integrate this from the limit infinity to distance r I can get the total work done. So, the total work done will be equal to what it will be what is the limit it will be infinity to r. So, let us now calculate we will put the value of e and then we will integrate and let us see what we are getting. So, w is equal to minus of what is E? K Q by x square d x. 